so you want me to count the photographs in this paper as fast as possible? Okay, let's do it. So page one, one photograph. Page two, one photograph. Page three, one, two, three, four. Ooh, there's a new French restaurant in town. And it's right next to Giant Nerd Books, my favorite place. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. We're supposed to be counting photographs. That's right, I'm sorry. All right, there's a lot on this page. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus the other two, that's 11. I'll go to the next page and, oh, come on. There's a headline right here. It says, you can stop counting photographs. There are 43. Well, I'm, I'm done. That was a social science experiment that revealed that lucky people behave differently from unlucky people. And what you just saw is how a lucky person would do that task. It was the only the lucky people in the experiment who actually saw that headline. And that's because even when they're under time pressure, lucky people remain curious. As well, the research revealed that they trust themselves, and they're resilient. Three ways to be predictably lucky. It's super important to be lucky. This year, the IG Nobel in economics went to three mathematicians and physicists for their mathematical proof that in order to be successful in life, what you really need to be is lucky. Come to find out, it's not the most motivated or gifted or talented who rise to the top. Shockingly, the people who become the most successful, the people who win awards, now get this, they are moderately talented and magnificently lucky. So if you want to be successful in life, be lucky. I love to observe lucky people and watch how they behave. I'm a serial entrepreneur and I coach other entrepreneurs, innovators, and next generation leaders. And what I see is that people who are lucky are not paddling through life. They are surfing. What do I mean by that? Well, when you're paddling, you're efforting. In order to get from point A to point B, you have to use all of your own energy. And if you want to get there faster, you just work harder. When you're surfing, it really does feel like you're catching a wave in life. Things are going your way. It's fun. It's exhilarating. You feel alive and calm and confident. So always, we'd love to be in this position where we stop paddling and start surfing. So what I'd like you to think is in every moment, am I paddling right now or am I surfing? And if you find that you are paddling, then just say, hmm, I know how to get back up on that board and adopt your lucky behaviors. Let's go back to looking at curiosity more closely from that social science experiment because this is a huge breakthrough to know that it's our behaviors that are driving our outcomes. What are unlucky people doing? Well, they tend to go through life with a sort of tunnel vision, like so focused on the task at hand that you're completely missing any clues in the environment that could save you time or give you new insights. They're paddling through life. The lucky people are more relaxed. They're noticing what's happening in the environment. It can even seem like they're distracted, but this is really their key to being lucky. So when you leave here today, one of the first ways that you can start surfing through life is to be curious. What are some easy ways to be curious? Well, next time you're standing in line and you feel that temptation to get out your phone, don't. Just hang out, watch see what's going on. Or get out of your ruts and routines. We all fall into patterns like taking the same route to the grocery store. Mix it up. 
take a different route. You might go buy a new coffee shop, hop in line for your favorite latte, and then end up meeting a really valuable business contact. These are easy ways to just bring more curiosity into your life. In addition to being curious, the science reveals that lucky people trust themselves. That means they don't make decisions based on conventional criteria or strictly rational thinking. They're listening to their intuition. But what is intuition? So many people will tell you that it's a gut feeling, a gut call. But so often those gut calls come from decades of experience in a particular domain, or even from a survival response. Intuition feels different. Intuition is this felt sense. It's this uncanny sense of alignment as to what is right for you. I call it a lost sense because we don't really remember how to use it or that we even have it. But it's easy enough to reclaim. Just substitute thinking questions for feeling questions. You know like when you're stumped and you don't know what to do next, what's often our response? We say, ah, what do I think I should do? Or we even go to a friend, what do you think I should do? Instead, ask, what do I feel I should do? And then wait. Wait for a knowingness to emerge. This is a completely different way of engaging with the world. And I think you're going to be surprised by the results that it produces. Let me give you an example from my own life. I had a list of things to do, just like everybody else. And on that list was to get my driver's license. One afternoon, I got the feeling. It feels like it's time to go get my driver's license. OK. So I hop in my truck. I drive downtown. I pop into the agency. I give them my old license. I get my new license. Easy, done. Well, it wasn't supposed to be that easy. There was a glitch in the system that day. And I have friends who have been waiting weeks or months to get their licenses. For me, these kinds of lucky occurrences happen all the time. And I'll be the first to say that it's kind of unusual. And that's because it's not logical. It's much more like being in lucky flow. It's much more like surfing. So here's what I'd like to offer you when you leave here and get back to your days tomorrow. You have that to-do list as well. Just when you complete a task, before going on to the next one, say, what do I feel to do next? And then allow your intuition to choose and to guide you. You might be surprised at the uncanny serendipities that come your way. People I've worked with have ended up meeting a new mentor who became an advisor to his next startup. Or another person met a sought after medical professional who is the exact expert that she needed for a beloved family member. They weren't hoping to accomplish those particular tasks. It's just that with serendipity, it happens easily. Being curious and trusting yourself is all fine when things are going well. But so often, we have challenges in life. Have you ever had a dream, something you were so excited about, and then it didn't go so well? My dream is to bring creative visionaries to the Fiji Islands a place to get off the grid, come home, be inspired, and rejuvenate. And so, to make that dream real, I bought Tavola Villa, a luxury private villa situated in Fiji. Doesn't she look beautiful? Until you got closer, 
The first time it rained, it rained inside. And do you see this photograph? I'm not saying that it just like trickled down and leaked. It was a torrential downpour inside. That roof, it was broken. And it wasn't just the roof that was broken. The oven, broken. The generator, broken. When you'd step in to take a shower and open the tap, no water would come out. Broken, and on and on and on. Then I called to order internet. And this is what happened. They delivered a spool of cable. This was like a whole new meaning to do it yourself. But look at my face in this photo. I'm laughing. And I learned this from my uncle. When I was growing up, we would go on adventures together. And don't ask me why, but there were frequently mishaps on our adventures. And every time we would get ourselves into a predicament, he would lean in and he would say, we're really making memories now, aren't we? You know, I loved his perspective because it created a bond for us in the moment. It gave us a sense of gratitude for that shared experience. It made it special. When I was overwhelmed by this villa project, I needed his perspective because the whole thing was daunting. And if that weren't enough, then the knockout punch. My mother had been in the hospital and she had recovered beautifully from surgery. We were so excited she was coming out. Then my sister called. Monica, mom's not gonna make it. I called my mother and I said goodbye. Then the phone rang. It was a pilot from the mainland. And that pilot wanted to know if I would go look for my friend. This was my dear friend who had been helping me at the villa fix all of these broken things. He had been in his helicopter that day and had disappeared off of radar. Would I go to his home and to his helipad and see if I could find him? I did. He wasn't there. His helicopter had crashed in the sea. And I lost my mother and my dear friend on the very same day. That was a really dark time. But I am surrounded with beautiful people. I hope you are too. People who love me, support me, care about me, and knew that I needed to grieve. So they all came. My children, their friends, my daughter's boyfriend, they moved in. They got all the work done at the villa. They cranked the tunes during the day, and at night, we danced. Today, Tavola is completely transformed. She's that beautiful, exquisite, and rejuvenating sanctuary that I dreamed of. And when I'm there, what I'm particularly struck by is the memories of all the people who came to help and the sounds of their laughter that brought Tavola back to life. My uncle was right. When you find yourself in a predicament, just search for another perspective. Find joy, gratitude in each and every special moment. And maybe you do it by saying, we're really making memories now, aren't we? So stop paddling, start surfing. 
You know, surfing, in its essence, is a way of moving in flow with the energy of the world around us. It's something we rarely think about, but when we are truly in flow, it is absolutely beautiful. And if you find yourself paddling, simply get back up on your board by adopting these three lucky behaviors. Be curious. Let your curiosity run wild. If you're going through life with blinders on, you're going to miss your lucky opportunities. Relearn how to use your intuition. We do have more than five senses. And this sense is all about letting you know what's right for you. Finally, be resilient. Stay on that board by finding a playful attitude and really practicing how to be resilient and joyous in life. You need luck to succeed. I know that you're talented, abundantly talented. And even so, you may struggle. We all struggle. But there's one thing I want you to know this evening. And that is that you have what it takes to be successful. You have what it takes to make an impact. Simply allow more luck to flow into your life. And I am so looking forward to the beautiful world that you create with the sparkle of your creative genius. So get up on that board and start surfing. Thank you.